So Mateus, uh, Mateus used to work at Apple. He left uh, last year, and most of the stuff that he's worked on um, hasn't even been released yet. So like, I don't even really have anything to tell you about Mateus, other than the fact that I know that he is amazing, and that I personally just want to hear him talk for as long as possible all the time. So I am going to put that on all of you as well, and hopefully you'll be just as delighted as I am. So um, please give a warm welcome to Mateus Kren. <laughs> Hi, uh, thank you for the amazing introduction um, because I'm the first one out here today. I figured I could um, do a bit of a good morning thing, get everybody going. Um, everybody loves those things, I know. So I figured I'll make you do the most embarrassing thing I could imagine. Um, so we're gonna be singing a song. <laughs> Yes, um, hello. Uh, this is one of the slides that I have that has content on it. Um, I, uh, yes. Uh, so the way that this is gonna work is because I don't know how to sing, um, so it would be insane. I mean, it's like completely embarrassing for me either way, but I figured, okay, I'll do the even more embarrassing thing that I could imagine, which is play the flute for you. Okay, and so I'm gonna try, I'm gonna play something that everybody should kinda know. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. It doesn't, it wouldn't help anyway. Um, so I'm just gonna start playing. And as you hopefully recognize what it is, I would like you to chime in. Now, of course, you don't know what it is, so I'll give you the words. The words are either da-da-da or ba-ba-ba or whatever you wanna you want to sing if you sing something that doesn't have any words or where you don't know the words. Um, yes, my goal is hopefully to, um, this is like 10 seconds long, so if you recognize it, please start singing with me, <laughs> otherwise I'm going to die here. Um, and uh, this is like my Rihanna moment where I get to like command a crowd, so... Um, Hopefully, by the end of this thing, everybody's gonna be basically screaming. So, okay, I also don't know how to play the flute, so I practiced this this morning in the car. Uh, so, let's just, uh, it's a short preparation. Does, that, does everybody hear that? Okay, in the back, all good? Cool. Lucy, thank you, by the way, for the stickers. You're the best, wherever you are. Uh, okay. Um. <laughs> okay. pretty amazing. Does this thing have words? I feel like people were like actually singing. Okay, cool. Okay, back to uh, black slides. Um, so as, um, yeah, so these were the, yeah, three out of my ten slides have content. That was like three of them. Um, as Jesse was telling you, I most recently worked at Apple on kind of future interfaces, products, experimental type of stuff. I quit a year ago and decided to just go into my garage and start working on a uh, VR operating system. Um, I can't tell you really about it. Um, I can also not really tell you about, so I can't really tell you about it because it's not really done, it's not really out there yet, so sorry. Um, I can also, as you know, not really talk about Apple. So basically, the last six years I can't talk about so I pretty much have uh, nothing to show and nothing to say. Um, so I'm just gonna try something else and uh, just tell you a little bit about my life and uh, about being a dad and a designer. The flute 
was actually a present to my little daughter. Um, she is two and a half years old now. Um, and she's my first and uh, so far only child. Um, she, that also makes me a dad. You know, my dad experience is two and a half years. And uh, I can definitely tell you that I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Um, and it's, uh, it's uh, pretty interesting. Uh, people in the crowd with kids, Give it up, okay, so you people will know what I'm talking about. Everybody else will have no idea. Um, so uh, she, you know, the other day I was actually at an interview at a company, not really an interview, but like a, I'm basically trying to like sell the work that I'm doing in my garage. Um, and so I've been like meeting a lot of companies. Sometimes it's kind of chill conversations over coffee. Sometimes it feels a bit more like an actual interview. And so every time I go into one of these conversations, I remember my teacher at school who was like, when you go into an interview, make sure to have a good answer for the question, what is your biggest weakness, right? Um, and so that's obviously like the worst question possible. And I really hope that nobody ever, if you get asked that, that's probably a good sign that you should not take the job. Uh, it's like a terrible question, but I can't like I can't not think about it. So every time I like, go through it in my head, and I'm like, oh yeah, but it's, uh, my only weakness is I'm such a perfectionist, right? <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, so no, but for real, like I haven't interviewed in a really long time, and so I now that I have a kid, when I think about my weaknesses, I'm like, okay, well. I don't just have a, I don't have one weakness. I'm like all weakness. All I have is weaknesses. Um, and so, right, my daughter, she's amazing. She's super cute and she's nice and the miracle of life and blah, blah, blah. Um, but I feel like any given weekend, um, I probably want to like strangle her with my bare hands like five or so times, right? She makes me, she makes me angry, she makes me frustrated, she, I'm completely lacking empathy. Um, I like, demand too much of her, et cetera, and I'm, you know, she's lying on the floor naked screaming and I'm trying to like chase her with pants or something so that she will put them on. So I'm not exactly like making it a nice experience for her most of the time, I feel like. And again, like parents will know what I'm talking about probably. For the others, you'll, you might learn and uh, that's gonna be exciting for you too. Uh, and uh, so, and so the other day, uh, kind of preparing for this interview, I was thinking this is so weird because all of these things are things that I would consider, sorry, um, I would consider being important for a designer, right? Like you wanna be super empathic, you want to um, kind of be able to like put yourself in another person's position and understand how they kind of perceive the experiences that you're trying to create. And you're just like trying to create something positive and nice, right? And here I am just like, you know, oh, losing it sometimes with my daughter. Um, and so I'm almost like, oh, how do I, did I even become a designer in the first place? Um, and so, well, it turns out that that was actually also not uh, very straightforward for me. Um, I grew up in Austria, in Vienna. And um, Austria is a weird place because um, it's like, it has this rich history of like art and classical music and some design. And then kind of today, none of that has translated into the modern world. Like there's not a lot of like design, there's not a lot of creativity, there's not a lot of this kind of entrepreneurship um, of just like wanting to make a cool thing and put it out in the world. Um, and uh, so I don't think that I could kind of do what I do over there. I mean, I could certainly not work at Apple over there. Um, and uh, so kind of growing up and out, out of high school, I was just like the typical Austrian guy, no taste, no, like, no sense of style, no idea about anything pretty much, not a lot of um, kind of connection to the modern world. Um, and uh, and uh, so I didn't really know what I was gonna study. I felt actually pretty lost when I was done with high school. And um, the only thing I kind of knew was that I didn't really want to study anything at all, which, as you can imagine, um, didn't make my parents super happy. Uh, but I did have uh, a little hack, which was um, that I was, uh, I was really pretty. I was kind of a, yeah. 
and I'm like I'm deliberately saying I was pretty and not handsome because I was like a complete I looked like a girl basically and I looked probably like three years younger than I was um, but turns out that that uh, worked kind of well for me and so I told my parents hey uh, some people will actually pay me money to be uh, in magazines on advertisements etc and so why don't I just do that for a little bit right I have no idea why they let me do it but they did so I left and uh, traveled to you know like Paris and Milan and New York etc um, to work for magazines and work for commercials and work for um, you know, like all kinds of stuff. Some stuff that was really cool, um, some stuff that was really exciting, some stuff that was really weird. Um, uh, it is a, I guess uh, I was listening to this lady's butt or something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm not really sure. I believe that I probably did not get the intent of the photographer in this case because my <laughs> performance seems, um, it's kind of weird too. This is like 18 years ago and she totally looks like Sansa Stark to me. Um, <laughs> so amazing work like this is what ended up making me go, okay, maybe I should do something with my brain. Maybe I should study. <laughs> Um, and it so to happen that um, I saw on TV this little bit about uh, a guy, a German guy, who went to Hollywood to design the Batmobile. Um, and this was like Batman and Robin days, so like super campy, super awful. But he was saying, hey, my job is I sit there, I draw, I come up with cool things, and I sell them, and that's how I make money. Um, and I figured, oh, that sounds like a cool thing. I like to draw. Um, and so I applied to industrial design school and um, studied, ended up studying industrial design. I was super lucky to get in because it was kind of my only shot. Um, but yeah, so I study industrial design. And um, four years later, graduate and pretty much still don't really know too much about design, I have to say. Um, the way I came to the Bay Area was that at the time, my girlfriend, who is now my wife, uh, who is extremely talented, she actually got a job um, in the Bay Area. And I was like, OK, I'll just uh, come along and you know, see what happens. Basically, um, live on her intern salary for a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, and uh, so you know, I come to the Bay Area. I realize, okay, I'm not actually a great industrial designer, but everybody here is looking for interaction designers, and I'm really into coding, and I'm really into the internet and stuff. So I kind of changed my resume a little bit, and um, put instead of industrial design, I put interaction design there, and uh, started interviewing. Um, and I was actually really lucky to find some people who would uh, kind of listen to me based on my industrial design portfolio, but for interaction design jobs. Uh, Managed to get my first job at a design consultancy. Did a year at Microsoft. That was interesting. Ten years ago, Microsoft was like not a really super design-friendly place. Uh, but literally on my first day at work, I had to like walk in and like look what the person next to me was doing on their monitor, and see like, oh, those are wireframes. Okay, that's cool. Um, I guess I'll be doing that now. Um, and. Uh, yeah, so you know, I kind of stumbled from this thing into Microsoft, um, which was not that great, uh, and uh, decided, okay, I need to do the Silicon Valley experience. I need to go to a small startup. I want to be the first designer there, um, and like really own the work so that I don't end up like indefinitely this industrial design, former industrial designer, who now doesn't have an interaction design portfolio because all he does is work for like big companies. Go to a startup, um, I was the first and only designer there, um, which means I got to call myself the lead designer, which is uh, great. Um, and I stayed the, the only designer for the next, tw uh, for the next two years um, until we got acquired by Apple. And uh, that's basically how I made it to Apple. Um, I, at first, at Apple, they kind of stuck me with my engineers um, and as like a supporting designer. And um, if you know Apple, um, or if you don't, I'll tell you, but uh, if you go there as a designer and you're not part of one of the big design teams, 
which you're usually not when you just come in through an acquisition, it's hard to have visibility, et cetera. So I didn't necessarily have too much to do in my first year at Apple um, and started like really working in the evenings and on the weekends on kind of my portfolio and stuff that I was excited about if you know, I didn't have too much of a chance to contribute at work. Uh, and uh, yeah, and one of the projects that I made, um, which uh, people who are like a million years old like me um, might actually have seen that um, it's kind of a touch interface for cars. It was like very conceptual, it was this uh, video on YouTube. And um, that got a lot of attention um, and ended up actually getting attention of this team within Apple who were then contacting me as if I didn't already work at Apple. Um, and they were like, oh, this is really cool. You should come in and interview, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, I'm already here. Do you want to meet at the <laughs> cafeteria? Uh, and so I, you know, I ended up, this is the, the team that Linda and Elaine, uh, sorry, Elaine Miley um, were on as well. And uh, she, uh, yeah, I met them, I interviewed, I made it in, and that's where I spent four years um, working at Apple on crazy, cool pencil, face ID, big iPads, whatever secret stuff that is not out yet. Um, and uh, I met a lot of cool people there, um, including Jesse, Elaine, thank you so much for this conference. Um, and uh, you know, I got the opportunity to stand here and, and talk, which is, to me is mind-blowing. Um, because really, I mean, from the beginning of uh, working, when I came to Silicon Valley, to pretty much now, I'm just uh, showing up and pretending like I know what I'm doing and uh, learning as I go. Um, and so, in a way, like, on Monday, it became really like full circle for me when, at the registration party, I was able to bring my daughter. Some of you might have seen her run around and like put ice cream everywhere. Um, <laughs> and uh, she, you know, in a way, like no matter how like crazy, hard, and frustrating and tiring it gets to have her, like all I can really do anyway is to try to make it nice for her, right? So. You know, in the moments where I'm not like dying, uh, I play with her and I make music with her and we draw on the street and we run around and, you know, and we go to events where I know that she will be um, having fun and meeting people and being a little bit random. It makes it easier for me because she's uh, preoccupied with other people. Um, but that, it, to me, that's ultimately what feels like what, for me, being a designer is as well. Um, like no matter how, no matter how much on my first day in my first job I came in and I didn't even know what a wireframe was, and uh, no matter how much I almost like had to like stumble from opportunity to opportunity, like literally having no clue, and then a couple of years later um, ending up in this like really cool job at Apple. Um, no matter how much I feel like I don't know what I'm doing or how much. Nobody gets what I'm doing, and I want to strangle everybody with my bare hands. Uh, I think what makes me the designer I am, and I think uh, probably some of you, the designers that you are, is that in the end, we always just, we keep on making things that make people happy, right? We try to make things that get people excited, and, uh, or at least we just try to make new things that nobody has ever seen before. Thank you.